All right there, everyone. More and more pundits are recognizing that the Yellow Vest Uprising is indeed threatening the entire globalist world order. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. But first, as always, a huge shout out to all of our first time viewers. A very, very warm welcome to you. I post two videos a day analyzing current events in light of some really awesome conservative trends. So if you would please smack that bell and subscribe button, it'd be an absolute privilege to have you with us as a regular part of this channel. Well, as I'm sure most of you know, what's being called the Yellow Vest Uprising has officially entered its eighth week of protests. We've literally seen two months of uninterrupted demonstrations calling for the resignation of French President Emmanuel Macron and the repudiation of the globalist world order by the French government. Uh, for his part, Macron is, well, he's doing basically absolutely everything he can to quell the uprising, right? He himself has been laying rather low. Ma Macron was invisible, remember, for like a week during, at one point during these two months of protests surfacing only when he gave an address to the French nation, basically groveling before the Yellow Vest demonstrators and doing his best to buy their forgiveness. Of course, the Yellow Vest demonstrators wanted nothing to do with what they saw as uh, Macron's rather condescending gesture. And if he really meant what he said, he would resign immediately and the French government would repudiate the globalist policies that have created so much economic, cultural disenfranchisement uh, within the nation. And so, um, left with no other recourse, Macron's begun to crack down on the protesters. I'm sure you've heard that French authorities have arrested the leader of the Yellow Vest Uprising on the charge that he organized an undeclared demonstration. They're actively trying to get the Yellow Vest Facebook page shut down. The police are relying more and more on water cannons and tear gas to try to disperse the protesters. All of this is not going to work. Uh, if anything, the more the state cracks down on the protesters, what? The more they incite further protests, right? The genie's out of the bottle and there appears little that Macron or anyone else can do about it. And I have to say that as each day and week goes by, marked by renewed protests, we're seeing more and more journalists and pundits and so-called experts beginning to realize that the Yellow Vest Uprising really does pose nothing less than perhaps the single greatest threat to the globalist world order that we have seen yet. And I was particularly struck by an article on the Australian site Adelaide.com written by contributor Andrew Hunter. Uh, Hunter basically makes the argument that the Yellow Vest uprising poses a very dire warning for what he calls democracies. Now, I think he's a bit careless there for reasons that I'll develop in a moment. But by democracies, it's pretty clear that he's referring to the kind of democracy, democracy that's allowed indeed, that's mandated by globalization. And hence, by implication, he's talking about a dire warning for globalization itself. And Hunter makes a very, very interesting argument here. He notices, quite rightly in my opinion, that the Yellow Vest Uprising is emphatically not a partisan movement. It's not representing any particular party or political platform or policy. In fact, the more you think about it, the Yellow Vest Uprising has nothing to do with any political cooperation at all. And they don't believe that any solution to their economic and cultural predicaments can be found in the current structures and its elected representatives. And this is why the Yellow Vest Uprising is such an existential threat to the globalist world order. Let me say that again, because I think it is absolutely key to Hunter's argument. I think he's right there. What makes the Yellow Vest Uprising so dangerous to the current world order is that their absolutely unrelenting demands find virtually no possible solution within the given globalist structures and its representative elite. You see, if we were to draw parallels between the Yellow Vest and, say, the Popular Front Uprising in the 1930s, we'd immediately notice the Popular Front identified with the political left. They self-consciously align themselves with the French Communist Party and with Workers International and the Radical and Socialist Party. In other words, the Popular Front was responding to problems by advocating solutions provided by their current political structure, at least a particular political wing. This is simply not the case with the Yellow Vest Uprising. They've rejected an alliance with any established French political party. 
It appears that most of its participants either didn't vote in the last presidential election or they voted for Le Pen and national rally, what Hunter would call the extreme right. And so given that 70% of French approve of the protests and the cause for, of the protesters, and given that these demonstrations are spreading throughout Europe and even Canada, we may in fact be looking at that movement that finally hits at the heart of globalist establishments so as to bring them down once and for all. And for Hunter, that meant liberal democracy and liberal democratic uh, institutions. Now, let me start where I think Hunter goes awry in his analysis. Nationalist populist movements are emphatically not anti-democratic. Okay, Again, the data is in on this one, and it's unfortunate that it seems that Hunter has not availed himself of these studies. What these studies have demonstrated is that populists are not against democracy itself. In 2017, Pew Research found across Europe and the United States an average of 97% of their populations saw democracy as a good way of governing their countries. A World Value Survey found the same totals. The supermajority of Europeans, which other studies have found to include at least 25, 30% committed nationalist populists, feel very, very good about democracy. Democracy isn't going anywhere. What nationalist populists are very concerned about are certain aspects of democracy, and that's fundamentally different than being opposed to democracy itself. In fact, far from being anti-democratic, nationalist populist voters want more democracy. They want more referendums. They want more politicians who are actually going to listen to their concerns and who will in turn give more power to the people and less power to establish economic and political elites. Nationalist populists are far more interested in direct democracy rather than the kind that derives from Brussels, which so often overrides the concerns of the populations of sovereign nations. To help clarify, Eatwell and Goodwin's recent study on nationalist populist movements make a distinction between what they call redemptive democracy and pragmatic democracy. The kind of democracy that operates within globalist world structures is a highly pragmatic democracy. It's based on the pragmatism of the technocratic experts of uh, the technocratic expertise of ruling elites that differs very much uh, from that of the people, right? The kind of pragmatism practiced by political and economic elites within so-called democratic structures have little of anything to do with the concerns of the majority of national populations. Pat Buchanan pointed this out just in his latest column. He notes that President Trump was not elected by the old Republican elite concerns of tax cuts and judges and an increased defense spending. Instead, Trump was elected on securing the borders, extricating America from our foolish wars abroad, eliminating trade deficits with NAFTA nations, the EU and China, making allies pay their fair share of the common defense, renewing our manufacturing base, and getting along with Russia. Now, these are all issues that the globalist elite, the practitioners of pragmatic democracy, quite literally could care nothing about. They don't care about our borders. They don't care about you know, national specificity on trade agreements. They don't care about China. They don't care about proxy wars and military presence throughout the world and defense budgets. And they sure as heck don't want to have anything to do with the anti-globalist antics of a renewed orthodox Russia, except, of course, if you're talking about a gas pipeline stretching over into Merkel's Germany. Then that's okay. But nevertheless. The key here is that the populists are for what we might call redemptive vision of democracy, which restores democratic rule and institutions as compatible with the values of the population and which protects the rights of citizens, the citizens of a nation, as well as its culture, customs, and traditions, and seeks to rid the nation as much as possible of corrupt and distant political elites. This is the whole notion of democracy that is animating and inspiring the nationalist populist movements throughout Europe, and most especially the Yellow Vest uprising. And so while democracy is safe and sound, the world order comprised of the pragmatism of the economic and political elites is most definitely in mortal danger. 
The yell of that stop rising, which shows no signs of faltering anytime soon and whose influence is spreading way beyond France, is indeed the single greatest threat to the globalist world order that we have seen thus far. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on either our Patreon or PayPal links below. Become a supporter of this channel and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of awesome conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish.